An asset that has compounded at 223% per year for 11 years has to have volatility. It has the same volatility as Amazon stock, 80%. And to your point on, on Bitcoin drawdowns, uh, Amazon every year in its 24 years of life has had a double digit drawdown, including this year. The average drawdown in Amazon stock is 31% five times over 50%, twice over 90%. When was the right time to sell Amazon? That would be never. So volatility is not your enemy. It's your friend. You want volatile assets. Now, you, what you want is upside volatility. Downside volatility is painful. But over the long term, holding an asset that has volatility is the whole point of investing. You know, I'm going to blame, I'm going to do what everybody else does, Mark. I'm going to blame the media, okay? Why not? I'm just going to throw it out there. If something goes from 11 bucks to five and a quarter, five bucks, that's about a 53% drawdown. That doesn't get a lot of attention. But when something goes from 65,000 to 30,000, it's yeah. the same drawdown. But because the numbers are so much bigger, it's yeah. going to naturally get attention. As you pointed out in Fast Money, like two years ago, the key is the long term and the series of higher lows. Every time it falls, it falls to a higher low in Bitcoin. You still see that uptrend continuing, I assume. Yeah, look, the, the, the real problem, Sully, and we've talked about this in the past too, is price is a liar, right? The price of an asset is not its value. The value of the asset is determined by the fundamentals and the fundamentals of Bitcoin, of Ethereum, of cryptocurrency broadly, of blockchain technology broadly, are all increasingly getting better and they're getting better at an accelerating rate. The price is what two people decide to exchange an asset for. And unfortunately, what happens is we go from investors buying things because they think the price is below the fair value to traders who buy things when prices move up or down to speculators who buy things because the price is going up. And unfortunately, in the past year, we have a whole bunch of gamblers who got free money from the government who are buying things and they're buying on leverage. And what happened in the last couple of days is a whole bunch of levered traders, people who were 20 times, 50 times, in some cases, 100 times levered, got margin call and they need to get flushed out. This is a healthy correction. We need this to get the money back to the investors and assets flow to their rightful owners. If you're hitting the panic button selling today, think somebody is buying. Yeah. Who's buying? Well, answer the question, because here's what we do know. If you look at like BitBuy and some of these other websites in Asia, you can see and, and Larry McDonald and others have pointed out online that people got whacked with margin calls. Mark, you know that. I mean, people, smaller investors likely levering up their portfolio. They got crushed. Maybe their accounts were closed because they couldn't meet margin. We know there are people who have margined up technology stocks on the way up to buy crypto. Tech comes down. They need to raise the money to, to pay back the bank for their margin on the tech. So guess what? They have to sell crypto. Do you feel like the last couple of days was kind of the perfect storm or maybe the perfect flush? and a confluence events all as China comes out and says, oh, by the way, we're cracking down on all things crypto. Yeah, look, you know, the, the FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt is, is the same, right? It's about the energy usage, which is a crock. It's, it's about clamping down or regulation, or you're gonna ban Bitcoin, or you're gonna ban crypto. You can't ban a decentralized asset. The reality is when you get a margin call, you don't get to choose what you're gonna sell you have to sell everything and you have to sell the most liquid things. And so remember last March, Bitcoin fell 55% in about 12 hours, we got to $5,000. And people said, oh, it's done, it's over, it's going to zero. It's $40,000 today, it's not done, it's not going to zero. When you and I were together at this same oh dark 30 time, day after Thanksgiving, okay, there was a threat that Mnookin was gonna ban crypto, regulate crypto. And what happened? It went from about 30,000 down to 18,000. And you asked me what you should do. So you should buy it. You should buy some today, you should buy some tomorrow, you should buy some next week and next month. 
and keep accumulating ownership of the network. This is the most powerful computing network in the history of mankind. You want to own a piece of this network. Yeah. And it's just like every other network that we own, whether it's Apple or Facebook or Amazon, you want to own pieces of these network for the long term. Think about this. Despite all the yeah. volatility, Bitcoin's up 26% this year. It's up more than the S&P. It's up more than Apple. It's up more than Peloton, which is down 30%, 25%. So it's doing great. It's just people, because of your point, they look at the big numbers and don't calculate the percentage moves. And they just focus on, on the big activity. And uh, they end up, unfortunately, selling yeah. to the long-term accumulators like me. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.